Mitch here again. In this video I'm going to be showing you in detail uh, the process involved in changing the band linings. Now if you haven't already got it I would highly recommend getting a copy of this book, the uh, Model T Ford uh, service book, um, detailed instructions for servicing Ford cars. Um, many Model T owners like to refer to it as the Model T Bible because it contains pretty much everything you need to know. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get stuck into it. Okay, these are the uh, the new linings that um, that we're going to be putting in. Um, as you can see, they're called Scandinavia linings for Ford cars. And uh, basically, what we need to do first, and what I've done here, is actually put them in some engine oil to soak. Now, they need to be left in oil for at least 24 hours to soak. That way, that they're nice and supple and easy to work with. Okay, and you can see the bubbles on the surface of the oil already where, the, uh, where they've started to uh, absorb the oil. As I say, they need to be left in for 24 hours. It is quite a dense cotton material that these linings are made from, so 24 hours at least they need to be uh, left to soak for. Down here we have the uh, rivets. These are the uh, brass rivets that, uh, that we use, or split pins rather. Rivets, split pins, not much difference. Um, they will be used to actually attach the linings to the um, the bands. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll leave those in there to uh, to soak. Now the first uh, job, according to the manual, is to take off the bonnet or the hood. Um, we've already done that, so we'll move on to the next step, which is disconnecting the starter motor cable. The next step is to uh, remove the four mounting screws which hold the starter motor to the transmission cover. I should actually pause here to mention that uh, before attempting to disconnect any electrical parts, it's a good idea to disconnect the battery, um, as you can see is being done right here. Okay, so now we're ready to access underneath the floor, so we need to remove the rubber floor mat. I've already done that, as you can see here. And we also need to remove the floorboards. Now this is quite simple, they're literally only sitting there and only held in place by the weight of the rubber floor mat, so they all just lift straight out. Let's pop that out. Okay, now we've got all the workings under the and as you can see here, we've gone ahead and removed the pack nut holding the exhaust to the manifold and we've pulled the exhaust out. <laughs> now we need to disconnect the magneto terminal wire and also the external oil feed line. As you can see here now, we're uh, disassembling the, uh, or rather disconnecting the uh, Bendix gear from the end of the starter motor. Um, this was necessary because the uh, starter motor um, wasn't going to clear the uh, firewall as well as we'd hoped, so the whole starter motor assembly and Bendix gear was removed to make it easier to get the hog's head out. The next step, as you can see here, was to loosen off the band nuts uh, so that it was actually easier to lift the hog's head clear of the uh, ears on the transmission bands. You'll see shortly how it, uh, it's not actually necessary to completely remove uh, the nuts um, and at any rate it would make them a lot more difficult to get back on again. So you basically just back them out most of the way um, and that's, that's more than enough. Also note that uh, I'm using a, uh, a band tool here which actually holds all of the bands together um, so they don't spring apart when you, uh, when you take it apart. The next step, as you can see here, is to undo the top two bolts on the universal joint, which are actually connected into the back end of the hogshead cover. The next step is to undo and remove all 12 bolts which hold the hogshead in place. Now that we've got all the ancillaries um, disconnected and out of the way, it's now time to pull the hogshead. Um, we uh, didn't really have any trouble getting this one off. Uh, it came, up, came out quite easily. The next step, as you can see, once you've got the hogshead off, is to remove the band tool. Uh, we've already got it off here, of course. And uh, the next step is to remove the bands themselves. Now, they just simply rotate and slide out. They're fairly easy. 
Occasionally they might get caught on the way through, but now that, as you can see, these ones came out uh, with relative ease. And you don't have the removable ears. That's the brake lining you got there. So there we go. That's all of the bands out. The next job, as you can see here, is to remove the old linings from the bands. Now, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. Just be careful not to uh, kink or bend the bands, as they need to be kept in shape. Oops. I and once you've removed all of the old band linings, it's just then just a case with a pair of pliers to remove the old rivets as you cannot reuse them. Okay, so the next step is to um, obviously start lining the bands with your freshly soaked linings, which as I mentioned previously should have been kept in an oil soak for a minimum of 24 hours. Um, so basically what happens here is we start on the second hole um, remembering to leave enough uh, lining sticking out at the end. Um, this is about five millimeters or about a quarter inch here or so. Now you'll also want to make sure that when you're banging the rivets in that the legs of them are actually um, at 90 degrees to the actual bands themselves. In other words you don't want them running um, in line with the bands otherwise they could just actually tear off uh, when they're in use. So th as, you, as you can see here this is the correct way of applying the, the new linings um, so that the legs on the rivets are actually at 90 degrees to the band itself and make sure that they're hammered in fairly tightly but at the same time don't overdo it otherwise you could actually snap the leg off the rivet. Now I'll just pause here to show you the um, the old um, linings were actually riveted on incorrectly on my uh, Model T. As you can see here, the uh, legs of the rivets are actually uh, running parallel to the band itself, which is incorrect, and uh, it actually can uh, result in not only the possibility of the band lining coming off, but it can also, you can see here, the rivets can actually, uh, there's a potential for them to score the drums as well. So here's the correct way of doing it, the, the new ones, uh, and you can see the rivet heads are actually um, at 90 degrees to the band. So here you can see we're putting the end rivets on each of the uh, bands. Um, this gives you the opportunity to make sure the linings are taut at the ends, and the reason we had to do them separately also is because you've got the ears on the end of the uh, bands, um, you actually need to put, um, put a block or something underneath the uh, the rivets um, so that you can actually access them and here we are putting the end rivets in. So now that we've relined the bands it's time to put them back in the transmission taking care to put them in carefully try not to kink or bend them um, as they do need to have a nice snug fit over the drums when they're in use. And as you can see here we start furthest from the flywheel and work our way towards the flywheel as we're putting each of the three bands back in. All three bands are the same, they don't go in in any particular order, and neither do they have to go around any particular way, as long as the ears are facing the top, as you can see here. At this point we reinstate the band tool. This holds all of the bands together in a nice neat row so that when we go to put the hogshead cover back on the ears actually line up with the pedal rods. So if you didn't have that tool you'd just use cable ties? Cable ties, yeah. Right there. And I'm not Thanks. 
At this point it's time to uh, reposition the hogshead and start lowering it back onto the transmission. Um, taking care not to hit it against the magneto. Um, if you damage the field coils on that, um, you're going to be in big trouble. So take care when putting the hog's head back on. Over the magneto. Now it's important to carefully inspect the uh, gaskets um, on the transmission cover and unless these gaskets are in perfect condition they should be replaced with new ones um, and here I've used rubberized uh, cork gaskets which I had to cut myself and also if it's necessary to install a gasket on the top half of the ball cap that's by the universal joint there um, this can be done by cutting a new ball cap gasket in half and placing one of the halves on the upper section of the ball cap now you need to line up the holes of the gasket with the holes on the ball cap and make sure the ends of the gasket extend all the way down to the crankcase as we don't want oil leaking everywhere. Next step as you can see here is to reinstate the starter motor making sure that the electrical contact is in fact on the top. Now once all four starter motor mounting screws are nice and tight you then need to re reinstate the uh, Bendix gear um, as you can see here and I would also uh, recommend that you have a close look at the manual which I recommended at the start of this video to show you clearly how to do that. Next we need to reinstate the magneto contact as shown here. And also reconnect the external oil line. Now you need to take extra care here. It is a copper tube and when you reseat the tube um, onto the fitting you need to make sure when you tighten it up that you don't put any twists, kinks or anything like that in the tube which might constrict the flow of oil um, as it does actually feed the first uh, main bearing on the motor. So take care when putting it back on. You'll also need to reconnect the exhaust pipe to the exhaust manifold taking care to make sure that the pack nut is done up nice and tight so that it can't come undone with engine vibration. And once you've done all that it's just a case of reconnecting your battery. And lastly to put the uh, floorboards and the floor mat back in place and take your newly refurbished Model T for a test drive. Now it is important to make sure that you um, very carefully um, bed in the new linings. Don't go hammering the, the low band or any of them for that matter. You want to make sure you bed them in and run them in nice and gently. Now it's probably unlikely that you'll uh, actually get them adjusted on the first go, like properly adjusted. Um, so during that bedding in process you might need to tighten up your bands just to get them to do what they're supposed to do. And the other thing that you'll want to check is um, you would have likely replaced the gasket um, for the transmission cover. You'll need to periodically um, tighten that up um, as it is likely that it will leak oil uh, for a little bit as mine certainly did. Um, so just keep an eye on that and tighten that up as necessary to stop any oil leaks around that new gasket. Well I hope this video has been of some use to you and has been educational I hope. Um, if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, I'm more than willing to uh, give you a hand. Well we'll see you on the next video and thank you for watching.